<laughs> very, very good. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'll share my screen in a moment, but I just wanted to say I've been working with Dakota products since 2005. So I've seen the uh, the evolution of, of, of the financials product through many releases. So I'm reporting here from Boston Mass today. Um, it's a beautiful spring day here. I'm about to go out and cut the lawn after, I, after this call. But I'm going to share my slideshow now, and we're going to have some fun today. We're going to go through the best of, and then we'll have a, a little Q&A at the end. Okay, thank you. Let's see, Let's see if this works. Excellent. Very good. So over the years, we've, the last few years, we've looked at, and as a company, Millennium, we've looked at what were the best features in 13 and 14. As people left behind, they left version 9, 10, 11, and 12 behind, and we were introduced to 13 and 14 in the recent years. Um, so we're going to start with versions 13. Um, one of the big changes in the evolution was this new menu, and this is the new panel-based menu, as I call it. Um, it, it, it. It really increases your navigation efficiencies. It takes it takes a while to, to leave the old menu behind and, and work with this menu. So I work with the customers on it. Um, the menu changes, of course, are based on your capability. So it's got a clean and efficient look. So when this came out with the white background, uh, it took a bit of time for people to begin to get used to it. But once they did, uh, they really enjoyed it and it increased the way that they could navigate. So it's panel based and it's based it, it uses your capability um, to, uh, you know, for the size and the display of what are in these different panels. After using it for a period of time, I see the customers just fly through it really rapidly, uh, and they and they and they like it better than the old menu. But alas, the old menu is still there. So the classic V12 menu is still an option. People still use this, but very rarely. I see it used less and less as they like the new, new panel menu. Also, of course, the, the Coda portal, uh, which came out in, I think, 11.3 or 12, that really, um, it's, people use the portal much more than they use these classic menus or the panel, or the panel menu. So that was a big change for 13. So what were the big features in version 13 that were it used that people had, had different ideas of how to use? So the word flexi field emerged. Um, and it first became uh, something that was placed on element master. So we all know what the eight elements are and how, how they're used. So it, it really extended the element master with new attributes for reporting which was a, a big improvement uh, for the financials. So the way we set them up is we use the assistant element to add the flexi field, uh, we're creating or modifying elements. So what do we use them for? And when we have our calls with the customers, we see uh, that, they, that they use the, these uh, flexi fields to store additional uh, information about the element itself, such as projects or vehicles, uh, you could use it for it storing employees or locations. Um, it holds different types of field types. So you can put uh, dates in there or text. There's integers. Uh, there's, there's a list or decimals. There's checkboxes uh, for a table. So you can use them. It's, it's a very powerful tool. But the best part about it is, is once you get them set up and you get them working, um, you can add these fields to your selectors and presenters. Uh, you can they also appear on the account summary that most of us use uh, and, and also in print format so it's a very powerful tool that first came out in version 13. It was one of the biggest changes of that that was in version 13. the other one which i use extensively uh, today is is the repository so the repository is really a file output storage for items such as you can you send your ACH files or your bank files or your printed formats to these repository folders. Um, they're managed and assigned by company and, and by user for sharing. 
one of the a security concern is that the files can be stored as read only for security purposes. And how do you get things out to these repositories? Well, you use this, they can be selected as a device type on an output device master. So for example, a pay run or pay proposal, uh, it, you can use this as a device type, which would be instead of a printer or a, or a folder, you can select the repository. So it's a, it's a, it was, a, it was a, a way of being able to keep the, the, uh, the output device, the output items in the, in the application itself. I use that one a lot. And, and once people learn how to use it, they really enjoy it. <clears throat> so the, the, one of the biggest things that, another big feature that came out in version 13, and I used to get this question a lot. People were having to, uh, uh, at the end of the year, at, on December 31st, for example, they'd have to run into the, into the county department and print out their ledger because they needed to have a, have a copy of the ledger uh, for year end, for fiscal year end or calendar year end. So this was a customer request by many customers that I've seen over the years. And what it allows you to do is, is to run the, the AR aging or AP ledgers with a reference date and it gives you a look back so you don't have to run in and print out one at the end of the year. You can always run it as at a particular date. Um, this was asked for by our customers for many years. And I was very glad to see it come in 13. And, and it, it's really changed a lot. Um, having this reference date, uh, you can have it prompted when you run it. So that was, that was a big one for version 13. I really enjoyed telling the customers about. Um, staying kind of on the ledger area, we have these these new aged analysis that came out. Um, so this is a really a, a really nice tool to use. Um, it, it uses an existing AR aging ledger, um, but when you when you run this aged analysis, uh, it has different features on it than the ledger does. Uh, you can sort by and subtotal by customer, which is different than the standard traditional ledger. It also has this element information panel on the right, which is almost like an account summary within itself, where you can see additional information about the element, highlighted element. So you can see address details and bank details. Um, you can see the, 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 the uh, shortening, the company code, et cetera. And you can toggle through this piece up here and you can have different displays of different sets of information. So I really enjoy this. It does export to analyzer and the columns, you can drag and drop the columns um, and, and move them around without changing the original ledger master. So the eight analysis, uh, once I sh uh, showed those to the customer, they thought that was a huge improvement, which it really is. So on to 14, what were the big changes in 14? Let's take a look. So, and this is used all the time, and this is this is this is really a time saver. These finance processes are now available as scheduled tasks. You can run your allocations and your allocation chains on a schedule for a particular time of the day. The balance audit, which is usually reserved for year-end processing, you can run that now instead of having someone have to run in the office on it. Um, or having to run it remotely, they can run the balance on it. You can run currency revals, uh, diary notifications. You can even generate a pay collect proposal on these schedulers. Uh, reminder letters, intercompany processing, and your table link document loads and element loads can all be on scheduled tasks, where before it required someone to actually be in the code of product to run these processes. So this would help with your, with your, uh, your monthly close, especially when you're looking at your allocation balance on it, revals. So that was a, a big feature uh, improvement in version 14 was the schedulers. And there's actually a few more that I didn't put on here. Yet. Um, the other one that came out with version 14 is the element authorization. 
So really, if you think about uh, the elements that are set up routinely, things like vendors and customers, so it, it, it has a workflow approval uh, and it, you as, a, as, a, as the accountant can set up a, a new vendor master, but it's not gonna be usable until, that, uh, until the permission is granted through a workflow that it can, it can be used. So it creates another level of uh, internal control really with the accountants. Um, it maintains the history of the changes in the assisted element and the account summary. Uh, and this, these rules can be imported and exported. It's very easy to set up uh, in terms of the workflow engine behind it. Um, it it's definitely a do-it-yourself uh, setup, not too many moving parts, but it, it, it gives a lot, of, uh, a lot of benefit when you're creating, constantly creating elements, uh, those elements that we like to create uh, more, than, more than the chart of accounts or more than the, the, the nominals, things like customers, vendors, uh, departments, perhaps, or uh, capital items. Um, the big one that came out for the flexi fields in version 14 was not only can, did we extend the element in version 13, but in version 14, the flexi fields now go on document transactions or finance transactions. So these flexi fields can be used to define uh, fields on input templates, which store additional information for a transaction. So it's, it's, it's in addition to the six external references and the line description, that's what I used to say all the time to my customers, you have those six external references and you have that line description, so use them wisely. Uh, but now we are able to put these flexi fields onto the document um, and those can be seen uh, in your browse details and browse transactions. And you can also use the multiple edit to modify the values. Um, the ledger master, AR, AP ledger type masters, can now include columns for element flexi fields so that the flexi field values can be displayed in the browse ledger and aged analysis. Um, and of course, uh, your, your, your document flexi fields are included on your input template masters. So between the flexi fields on the element and the flexi fields on the transactions, you've basically extended the, the abilities of the, of the reporting and capturing the business data that you need, uh, you know, tenfold. So that was a, a, big, a big advantage to have your, your document transactions hold more than the six external references in the line description. The, um, you know, the, the browse ledger and the aged analysis, at, at some point um, we were limited the amount of transactions column uh, and, and if you get into some companies they have they have lots of columns they want on these reports they they, they want their their traditional 30 60 90 the the the, the transaction columns a lot has has changed out to 40. Um, so that's a great you can display more columns and browse ledgers and age analysis or you're not limited uh, to the to the uh, original amount um, which improves the use of the browse ledger in the age analysis. The, um, the big one here, and I was just with a customer yesterday, uh, uh, we were talking about the attachments as a big, big thing. Everyone needs to have their attachments um, on their finance documents. If you, if you need to see a contract or an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document, uh, it, it originally, we're able to put one attachment each of the documents. So now you're able to add the multiple attachment to the finance document. So there's a primary attachment and then there's uh, secondary attachments and you can add multiple attachments. Uh, and that is really improved uh, from just being able to only add one. Um, you can also add attachments to the element masters as well. So if you can add a 1099 contract to the element not necessarily transaction related, but it might be related to a contract employee or something like that. So you're able to do that and put those contracts on the on the element as well. So that was a big improvement for the finance documents. Um, so on the assisted element, which we use all the time, and that's the assisted element is the way we control how elements are set up. So it, it has the background uh, template behind it. 
which allows you to um, keep a, a, a standard. And assisted elements are huge. I'm just talking explaining these with right now because they have so many different people setting up elements. But when you're creating an element using assisted element, you, know, you now have the option of using the same element template for the next element without reselecting it. So that's a time saving piece to it. Um, but just in general, the assisted element is, is a way of keeping your chart of accounts uh, uh, uniform. Um, derived fields, uh, we always used to use, we always use derived fields on our input templates. So they've uh, improved the, the sources for a derived field, can now include a field on the previous document line, uh, perhaps an external reference. Uh, and, and a field in the previous document line, which itself is, is derived. Um, so it's, it's, you can derive something from a derived field, um, which, which, it, which, is, uh, which is brand new for version 14, and also a field on the current document line as well. So they've really made big improvements with the transactions, how they look in, in your, your ease of, of, of data entry. Um, Security has changed quite a bit. Uh, the, the new one, which I really like, is the capability by company. We have many customers who, who are running dozens, if not hundreds, of companies. So uh, you can set up a user, uh, a user setup for capability to, so that it can only be active in specific companies. Um, the other one I really like is, is the inactivate users. So if you have contract employees, um, you can have a password disable that can now be based on an active until date. For example, a contract work, worker's password set to be inactivated in the future, i.e. six months contract. So you could set that password automatically uh, inactivate after three months and six months based on your employment contract with, without having to remember to do that. Um, the uh, change passwords and unlock users um, used to be only restricted to level eight and sub-level eight. Now that can be granted for any capability. Um, so you, you capability has functional, the capability master has functional security and the functional security tree to allow that, that, that uh, capability to change passwords. Uh, so no longer do you have to be only do that in level eight and sub level eight. Um, also on the password parameters, there's a new upper and lower case sensitivity. Um, and that's brand new as well in 14. Um, on the administration features, um, print formatter and workflow uh, can now be downloaded within the application. So access is controlled by a separate functional security nodes. This used to be a separate server process. We'd have to go out and, and run a different process to download the print formatter and workflow. So now that can be run from the application. Um, it, there, it, 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 so that will save your time from having to go out to a separate server process. Um, the other one, which I just used this week, is you can also uh, now import and export print format, which is great because I, I had set some print formats up. Uh, and of course, um, I was able to export those and re-import them into another company um, without having to, to, uh, to recreate the format all over again. So that's a great time saver right there. Um, for those of us who remember or have ever used a uh, customizer, we call it e-customizer, um, that can now be downloaded within the application. Um, and if you ever use customizer, you would remember when you went out to, to, to make a change to the form, you would have to remember what the, what the form name was uh, at the, at the, uh, uh, in a list of forms so you have to go back and forth to the form and say oh that's not it oh that's it and you have to do a kind of a trial and error so now the form names can be displayed on the bottom of each page that's a toggle so it goes on and off so you're able to see what the what the what the customized form is actually called so when you go to modify it it's, it's much easier for you to do that okay so on the finance side uh, on the revaluation chain. Um, so basically um, running the chain allows you to use the same effective date for every rule for those who, have, who use currency revaluation. You, you can apply the date to this and all subsequent rules to give each rule the same date when prompted at runtime. 
Uh, so that's a, 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 you know, for people who run Reval. That's that's a that's a, a bonus being able to use that same date for the for all of the rules um, as you run them. Um, improvements made, big big improvements made on the intercompany documents. Um, now you're able to copy the attachment. It, it 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 actually stores and copies the attachment from the original sending document onto all receiving documents. So as you're, if you're sitting in a company and you've gotten a, an intercompany charge, uh, you're you're able to now see the the copy of the invoice bill or what 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 it might be, uh, with from from the sending company. Um, the intercompany documents um, now copy the flexi field data to the receiving document lines. If the flexi field master is specified in both the original and receiving document masters, so those transactions that do use flexi fields, uh, just like external reference, you're able to see those now on the receiving document. Um, in the oops, in in the uh, reconciliation, the folders within reconciliation can now be scrolled independently, not simultaneously. Are you able to, to, to hunt and look for your uh, offsetting? Uh, entry before you do your reconciliation, and that that's a time saver right there. Um, the currency write-offs on the matching pay and company masters. Uh, there's two places that you can put the accounts codes uh, that can be defined. One, of course, is the debit currency write-off and the credit currency write-off account. So it it kind of allows you a way to distinguish your debits and credits. Um, if you wish, so you can see without a net effect, you can see the increase or decrease um, in, in a PL account, for example. It, it allows for easier reconciliation uh, if you wanted to see uh, just the debits uh, it, without having all the credits. And it, it just it just uh, you know it allows for a better view of what's happening in these in these uh, uh, debit and credit accounts. So they're they're not all jumbled together and net together. Uh, of course, if you if you change nothing, um, both the debit and credit differences or the debit currency write off account. So that's just an ease of reconciliation. Uh, the element finder, which we all know and love, the IBAN code has been added to the criteria that can be used to search in the element finder. So if you have a lot of uh, uh, elements that use the IBAN um, and you know the code, you have the code handy, but you don't have much else. And you're able to go in and, and put in the, the IBAN code and bring up the elements. It's, it's um, this is a good one. I was talking with uh, Phil Leaf about this yesterday. So the payment reference number, uh, the, it, the, when you generate the pay proposal in version 14, it's going to generate a unique payment reference number for each proposal. Uh, what what the benefit of this is? This can be mapped onto document masters, um, as well as output from pay through write or print. So it it's a way of uh, of, of referencing the payment run in aids and bank reconciliation. You can add this to the ACH uh, text file, and it, it it can be used or seen on the bank statement. So the payment reference number uh, kind of isolates that that. Uh, one payment, you can get back to the original bank statement that it was displayed on. Um, so that's that's been a, a, a big help. Uh, matching, um, so write-off tolerances can now be defined in home dual and matching currency on the capability master. It, it used to just be home, but now dual, dual um, currency. Um, the one that I was looking at yesterday um, are these new um, table link mapping tools. Uh, the link table mapping master, this is kind of the, the best part about it, 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 it kind of keeps you out of SQL Studio. If, if you're like an accountant like me, SQL Studio scares you. I can go in and define the fields in a source file, uh, an Excel file that I could turn into a, um, a character delimited or fixed width uh, or a text file. Um, it allows you to uh, populate the link tables and map it within the product. So you don't have to go out into your SQL Studio, studio anymore. Um, the link tables can be scheduled to load documents and elements as well. So it's available for character delimited or fixed width files, uh, and that's part of the mapping routine. But that's been, uh, it, that, so that piece is now in the application. Um, and, and, and you, 
you basically um, can, can use tabling maintenance functions, which is brand new, allows for the review and changes to the contents of the link tables. So using metadata selectors and presenters based on the contents of the appropriate link table data view, you can edit or delete the details of the contents um, and database columns and or multiple rows in the database column. So these two tools are, are in the uh, finance under the uh, table link area. And uh, I've been experimenting with them. I really like what I see with them. So, and then that's all we have for today. I say thank you for your attention. I think I'm just about out of time.